Before we get started, I want to thank one of our sponsors, Studio Bungie. Now, I had Crystal McNair on my show, and she's great. She cares about the community. She gives back, and she runs a great studio. What am I talking about? With Studio Bungie, it's not about hanging from the ceiling or jumping off of anything. It's a low-impact, high-intensity workout. You can burn up to 1,200 calories in a 30-minute session. There's small groups, and there's a personal trainer always available to instruct the class. There's also private one-on-one classes available. Call Studio Bungie at 770-693-2630 to schedule a free trial class. They're just about a mile west of the square at 999 Whitlock Avenue, Suite 3. Look for the clock tower. the museum back to life. You know, people sit out on the front porch hoping people will come by. Go forth and do good. It's insane. I have the most understanding wife in the world. I treat everybody the same thing. Oh, that's the other thing I love about Marietta. It's like a melting pot. You are listening to Marietta Stories. Each week, veteran podcaster Bill Nowicki brings you the heartwarming, interesting, and fun stories from the people that make the community of Marietta, Georgia, a place to call home. Here's your host, Bill Nowicki. I'm always impressed when I meet people that run small businesses, and especially in Marietta. And Terry Hendricks and Patricia Katopas do that at Market With a B. And they're on the square. They've been there for a few years. And they have a really cool story. And I'll let them tell it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Marietta Stories Podcast. I have Terry Hendricks and Patricia Katopis with me from Market with a B here in the Marietta Square. Hey, guys. Hi. All right. We're happy to be here. Good. I'm happy to have you. Are you happy too, Patricia? Yes. Thank you for being here. Yeah, sure. I met you guys online and then I saw you at uh, Glover Park Brewery and... We got to talking, and you told me your story. How long have you guys been in Marietta? Let's start there. Uh, We've had the shop in Marietta for three years. We're coming up on our three-year anniversary here on the 9th or 19th? 19th of January. 19th of January. Mm All right, but how long have you been physically in Marietta? I've been in Marietta about five years. I'm proper and in uh, Kennesaw before that. All right, so where did you grow up? Decatur. So you're a Georgia girl. Are you a Georgia person too? I am. I've lived here since I was eight. A transplant from West Palm Beach. Lived, grew up in Riverdale due to Delta Airlines. And yeah. I've lived in my house now going on 22 years off Burton Hickory Road. Okay, cool. So how? Now, when did you guys meet? Probably about, I would say, close to 18 years ago if I had to guess at another business that we both had you know having kids generally the same age and then um, you know just grew closer over the years what are your kids ages I have a 16 year old son and a 22 year old daughter you Uh, 21 and 18 there's a lot of facts Uh, yeah this is gonna be gonna be (laughs) bored I'm getting bored now Talk about your lives together in terms of your business. How did this uh, market with a bee even get started? Um, it began many years ago. Patricia and I really got to be close and trusted friends when we both were breaking up with our husbands of many, many years and went through that at, ironically, the exact same time. And we went through the whole divorce thing, the all of that, got through it all together, and then realized we are not in a position to just find a job because we had given so much up in retiring somewhat and raising our children. And we found ourselves both at not only our marriages were over, but our money was gone. We were trying to figure out, scrambling a little bit on how to you know, what is the future going to hold? What What is our retirement going to be? What are we going to do with ourselves? Being artistic uh, people that we are, we kind of, you know, I don't know, just started hatching a plan. As women do, we're resourceful, and we came up with this. Tell me about what that transition was like. It's very scary. You have given up your career building yours to stay at home and take care of children, And you're getting older, 
and your college degree is worthless that you got 20 years prior, Mm -hmm. you also don't want to just be making minimum wage. (laughs) So you want to have a quality of life. You want to enjoy what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You want a creative outlet. And this just seemed like the perfect concept. Now, you're an artist, Patricia. When did that start? Um, Well, I've always, even as a child, taken art classes. I worked two years on a Master's of Fine Arts in my early 20s, have always done something creatively. Did you continue that when you had your children? Even if it was just creating a birthday party for them, I was always looking for some sort of creative endeavor. I wake up every morning looking for something to create and do. Is it just through painting? Um, I've ha- through food, baking, just everything, right. I suspect there was a lot of details in terms of what is my life going to look like. When was the moment that you dis- that just looked at the handwriting on the wall and said, man, we've got to do something, and then go from there to business, owning a business? The whole thing came from Patricia. She called me one day and said, what did you say? Hello? <laughs> what, did you, what did you say? Was do it you, the spot that we found, that you found, that you thought would be interesting for us to do? Us okay. meeting at Carabas quarterly, catching up, talking about the future. Mm-hmm. And then I was on a TV show called Cupcake Wars and met a very nice gentleman named Rob Porter, who Terry has met on several occasions. He came into town, and we started talking about the three of us opening up a home gift store bakery and then he was missing california and kind of pulled out and so the two of us decided to just yeah go forward with the plan i mean it was a miracle that we found 113 church it was just the right timing was perfect timing what was here before was this it was called uh, katie may's classy flea it was uh, you know just a flea market kind of a place not this building is beautiful as you see it now with the brick and and everything and we exposed that ourselves but we came in it looked horrible I thought what the heck are we doing renting this place signing a personal guarantee scared out of our wits gonna be on the hook for all this money all this rent for all these years and this place looked horrible but we got in here and it really started to reveal itself as being a diamond in the rough wouldn't you say and it was fun to, it was freezing because there was no heat in here. But we, like I said, we did some of the work ourselves and some not. And But anyway, we love the, the way it turned out. We think the ambiance of the place is a lot of why it's successful. Yeah. And what was the square like three years ago? It wasn't as not at busy. All. Not at all. It's not. And we've gotten so many great restaurants in now, better boutiques. Yeah, and the real estate here, it's really tough. I mean, it's waiting lists. We have friends who would love to open something here, and they can't get a spot. Then the property values around here are going up, and with the new Marietta market going in back there, um, we're very excited about that. So I feel like we got in at, we were just dumb luck. We just got in at the right time. Plus, you're, I'm sure, much more involved in social media now. Yes. And that's your role, right? Uh, no, we both were both she involved. Her. No, we both. <laughs> <laughs> I usually come and say, Terry, any ideas for a post today? Because <laughs> it can get daunting to come up with something creative to post on social media every, every single, single day. day. How about you're on a podcast episode? I think it's going to be great for us. <laughs> it's be a good post. No, I mean, you could do a post about being on the absolutely. podcast. That's right. That's right. We, we will. will. Yeah. We absolutely will. So, unless we hate how it turns out, and then we won't. <laughs> That's right. Well, we'll see. It's still being created as we speak. Yes. But uh, when you came in here, blank walls, blank everything, who did the design? I'd say it, it unfolded before us as we did it we just bounced stuff off of each other we went to Waco and we got some ideas there Waco Texas Texas. why Waco what's special about Waco it was at the time we were opening this it was the new silos of Chip and Joanna Gaines 
uh, in Waco was was just opening. It was pretty new back then. And so we took a trip and saw what she was doing. And we got some ideas from there. And we traveled to Nashville and we saw what White's Mercantile was doing. We got some ideas from there. We went to, where else did we go? Just scouting around and trying to find ideas to kind of make this place, you know, working off of what other people, brilliant people had done. Anyway. Here comes a potential customer. I'll play it cool. You went around to a lot of different places, and then how did you select what you were going to have in the store? There has to be, is there an overall, like, feel you want people to have? We primarily buy what we would want to wear or a candle we would want to burn in our house or a bracelet or a pair of earrings we would want to wear, I think, or books we would like to have. I think we buy exactly what we're attracted to and what we would like or what we would like to give as gifts Mm. so I think that's kind of our philosophy on buying we have to really love something and we also love working with local vendors um, local craftsmen give back companies it makes you feel good when people come in and feel like they have found the perfect gift and it goes for a worthwhile cause as well or somebody like us a local business somebody that's a small guy trying to make it for themselves. Yeah. What's a, an example of that? The Love Your Melon Hats. Um, the proceeds for that go to fight children's cancer. We did an event. What well, was it called again? Love Your Melon. Oh, okay. They're, uh, you know, knit hats that are up there on the front table. That's what that does. We How did, did you find out about them? Social media. And I have a good friend whose daughter suffered from Patricia keeps moving her chair well, there's, there's trash. <laughs> <laughs> the trash okay yeah. well go ahead you have a good friend whose daughter had bouts with cancer so I'm sensitive to that because I saw what they went through and, and she's a friend of Trish, Patricia's too so um, is the thought that it helps keep your head warm when you lose your hair or is it just it did start from that yes went from the ch- they they donate them to children you know because they have no hair and I'll well you see what it is okay hold on I, she's walking over she's picking up oh that is really nice um, yeah and the, pro- and the proceeds go to that so we do that they have headbands too and they're going into t-shirts and all of that but it's, is that a local company in Georgia it, they're not in Georgia um I'm not sure where they're based out of. I think they ship out of California. I'm not positive about that. But anyway, we have Swell water bottles, which tries to keep plastic water bottles out of yeah. landfills and that kind of thing. And then the proceeds from that. Huge problem. A lo- it is a huge problem. And a large portion of the proceeds from that go to bring water to people in areas that have no water. You know, Johnny Walker Realty is a big part of Marietta Stories podcast, and their real estate agents are what makes that a great company. And Carrie Cox and Johnny Walker get the best folks. And one of those people is Carolyn Rambo Dawson, who cares about her clients, of course. I've been doing it for 13 years. I love meeting new people. I love it. I love everything about it. But the folks work together at Johnny Walker Realty. Terry is the broker. He is there all hours of the day and night with an answer for us if we have a question. And the other agents are like family. And speaking of family, her family goes way back in Marietta. I'm talking five generations. And my father was an orthodontist right off the square in Marietta. My husband said, if I can go to an orthodontist that tortured me for two and a half years and end up marrying his daughter and love him as much as I do, he must have done something right. Thank you, Carolyn, Rambo Dawson, and all the other real estate agents, and Carrie and Johnny of Johnny Walker Realty. You can reach them at johnnywalkerrealty.com. Find them at 262 Church Street, just down from the square. Give them a call, 678-626-0403. Now back to the show. Back in October and a few, uh, the last couple of years, we've done an event for 10 Women of Hope, which is a local group of women who they focus in on 10 women 
in the local area who are at risk of having something horrible happen, losing their house, their, you know, their husband has died or they're divorced, they have no, you know, means of taking care of themselves. And they, we have a one night event where we, I bring a ton of stuff from the shop and sell it and the proceeds for that go to help those 10 women. And it's a lot of vendors around, jewelry makers in the, in the area participate in that event so that they can help, you know, just a handful of women to keep them from, you know, losing their house or whatever horrible thing is happening. It seems to resonate with you and you yeah, guys' absolutely. situation. Yeah, absolutely it does. So it's, a, it's an event that we, we enjoy doing very much. What about this like chandelier and stuff? Where'd you get that? Uh, it's a company out of Arkansas, actually, and you know you can special order it. So in here we have everything you know that you we have furniture, lighting. We try to cover all the bases. It's a kind of try to be a one-stop shop, so that you can have something for the baby, a nice gift, uh, something for your house, uh, something for your man friend. We have many men's gifts. <laughs> And uh, every, just a little bit of everything. What would you suggest, like, for somebody like me, for a man friend like me, what would you get me? I would, do you have children? I do. They're uh, older. Okay, they, well, if you uh, were younger. If they were younger. Children. Maybe I'll get grandkids one day. Maybe. Right hold on, hold on, you're talking and walk, what? walk. One of my favorite things is the Dad's Playbook, which is Wisdom for Fathers, brought to you by the greatest coaches of all time. It's got a forward by Steve Young, but it's inspirational quotes so that the dad can actually coach his family the way coaches coach their teams. Did you just go to the bathroom? I don't know. I'm not. I'm listening to you talk about <laughs> anyway, that. that good, Dad's Playbook. Dad. Okay. I like. You got some T-shirts. T-shirts are always popular. All right. We have great socks, which we're very low on now. We have a flask, which you know every man needs a flask. And some tools, which we're very low on that right now. Yeah, but it's really cool. It's got like uh, leather on the outside. It's very yeah, nice. Oh, these are very nice, the flasks, if you golf or... They have like uh, pictures of our great state of Georgia. Yes, which, you know, anything Georgia, I, we have found that every, anything Georgia, Marietta Uni- related, The University of? <laughs> yes, the University of, or just Georgia in general, sells really well. here. You'd be surprised at how many visitors from other countries we get. Really? Since in the last three years I've been here, I'm amazed. People from Tokyo, Germany, England, all over the country, for some reason come here. I think they think we have some historical value. <laughs> I'm not sure. What, what would you tell them if they asked uh, what history has happened in Marietta? What would you tell them? I, well, I would tell them to go downtown to the <laughs> Margaret Mitchell area. Oh, okay. And then there's Gone with the Wind Museum, which is now closed, unfortunately. No, it's at the Brumby Hall. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, That's it's right place. next to the uh, Hilton. Uh, That's the Brumby Hall. They've redone that. Hmm, I didn't know that. I'll, I'm glad to know that so I can tell customers because they've been saying, what happened to the oh, yeah. Gone with the Wind Museum? Yeah, it exists. And... Uh, I, I bet you the parking's a little better, but uh, do you know what they're going to do with that Gone with the Wind? I heard it was going to be a huge restaurant. I hope so. We can't have too many restaurants around here. I wish we could get, get a restaurant down here on this street. Yeah, get some foot traffic. Yes, yes. All right, so you have things that you were talking about, men. How about women? Uh, well, the, it's pretty much everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so. That makes sense. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. That was a pretty dumb question. All right, Patricia is going to talk to us now about <laughs> life. And, no. Oh, gosh. No, I was going to ask you. I'll ask you a tough question. Now, how important was it to have Terry along for the ride on this? Well, I wouldn't say Terry was along for the ride. I would say. Well, I mean, having a partner along the way. I would say Terry's very much an important part of this <laughs> and all right um, back to terry no I'm just, I'm just messing with you at this point but uh, yeah. no but it, but how important was because it sounds like you guys were going through a lot of stuff and then trying to put a business together and having a partner that you could brainstorm with must be hugely important it's absolutely important it's everything you want your equal in talent and wit smarts temperament temperament yeah it's got to be the perfect partnership 
I, I was surprised you guys were hanging out at Glover Park Brewery because you spent so much time together already. We're here three days a week. But, you know, after you close up, you're like, hey, let's go get a drink. Let's go get something to eat. And you're right here on the square. So it just seems like the natural thing to do. But it, you don't get tired of spending so much time together? Well, I mean, we're here three days a week. That's, yeah, that's not, not so, true. yeah, it's that's not true. right. Well, tell me about your other uh, pursuits. I know you, you still have the cupcake business. No, we had cupcakes here uh, when we first opened. And we looked into outfitting the back for a bakery, but the building's so old and with fire codes, it would have been way too expensive. So I got a cottage license, and I was making cupcakes at home before I came to work and bringing them in. But under a cottage license, everything has to be already packaged. So customers would come in, and they would just see the cupcakes already in boxes. They couldn't select what flavors they wanted. They couldn't smell them. Uh, we gave it a shot, but it, it wasn't working out. And then just really the merchandise took over. Time came to order more supplies, and we just decided to let that go. Now, okay, so it's been three years now, Terry. I'm going to ask you this. So looking back, what would you tell yourself back then not to freak out about? Wow. It's always more important to be passionate about something. If you're passionate about something and you love what you do, the chances of success are incredible. If you really love it, you should go for it. Mm. Our philosophy at the beginning, when we first opened this up, I gave her a card that said, sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. When I first started and I was so nervous and everything, what I would just tell myself is, imagine not doing it. Mm -hmm. Looking back and thinking, why the heck didn't I do that? No matter what happens, and I know it's going to be great, but if something terrible happened tomorrow, I'd still be glad I did it. I know I would regret it, and I've loved it. These three years, I have loved it. I have done exactly what I wanted. Had a lot of control and independence. A lot of control and independence, and that's really what chased me out of my marriage, I guess. We don't want to get this personal, but it was about finding me and about because I got— you know, I moved out of my dad's house into my husband's house, and I felt like I wasn't making any of my own decisions to go from that to doing this, you know, success or no success. And we've been successful. But if it hadn't been successful, I still would do it again. So cool. It's inspiring. Why do you think they come here versus some other places? Well, I think if they, you know, just obviously for convenience, if they're close to the square, there's so much charm here. I mean, there's so much thought put into every single item in here. And it sounds like you've made a lot of good relationships in town with different folks. Absolutely. Probably one of my favorite things about this job is that people come in off the street and suddenly, oh, hi, I know you, I know you. And you've got this community of people in here who all know each other. Today, a couple of your friends came in, and then a couple of their friends came in that you didn't even know, and you met them, and it happens every day. And at this time of year, it's so great, because when everybody was walking out, they all said, okay, happy Thanksgiving, bye. And it was just, it was just so sweet. I just so small town, and I don't know, I'm not sitting in a cubicle somewhere doing something that I don't like, and instead I'm out here, I'm meeting peop new people every single day. Right. And you don't have the boss and all that other stuff. You can totally, re if you wanted to spend the time and remake this place, you could do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, no, there's no remaking. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no remaking. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, you're right. We can do whatever we want. I mean, yeah. Within reason. Within reason. You what? I'm late too often, but. Oh, really? Why is that? I don't know. I live right up the street. Sometimes there's a lot of traffic between here and Seminole Drive. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, cool. And uh, so do you want to talk about your art at all? Sure. What would you like to know? <laughs> well, you you also, you started out uh, doing art when you were a kid, but uh, you're still doing it now. How do you show your art or where? Uh, there's a gallery here on the square I'm connected with and I've been a part of Art Walks. I just did a residency in France for a couple of weeks. What kind of work do you do? Abstract, it's all abstract work, but heavily inspired by 
for instance, when I was in France, one of the paintings I did was of a rose bush that was outside of the cottage that I stayed in. Nothing is what it seems to be, but the inspiration is very heavy. Okay, cool. So you guys are open six or seven days a week now? No. Seven days a week through Christmas, yes. You're open late on what days? Fridays. Open late on Fridays. And we really stay until everybody's gone. Sometimes we're here very late on Saturday because people come in after dinner and stuff. But yeah. And open 10 to 6 every day on Sunday, 12 to 5, really. What would you, uh, how do you want to wrap things up? What do you want to say to folks? Shop small. Uh, investigate your neighborhood shop, small pop shops and restaurants and frequent them because that's where the best stuff is. And you're helping out, you know, small business owners, which, you know, they really need that. Great. Anything you wanted to add, Patricia? Just so thankful for the community. Terry was saying it's so wonderful when your customer comes in and says Happy Thanksgiving and you're always running into people you know and just so grateful to be a part of Marietta Square. Well, I'm glad you guys are part of making Marietta even better. I mean, like you said, over the last three years, things have changed here and everybody's noticing it and we have a lot of fun things happening the new market's going to open, supposedly, in January, is always what they're saying. But anyway, thank you so much for what you do for our community and uh, excited for you guys in the future. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks again to Terry Hendricks and Patricia Katopis. They're at 113 Church Street, Market with a B. Check them out, marketwithab.com.